the extraordinary talent and sheer guts of our next guest is being talked about in the whole movie industry. I'm sure you've heard yes, a lot about the it. The trade papers. Yeah. Well, New York uh, and New West magazines wrote about his determination not to sell the movie he wrote for himself called Rocky unless he could star in it. Please welcome the writer and the star of Rocky, Sylvester Stallone. Well, thank you. Thank you it, very much. And it, really an incredible movie because it starts out so simply and it's gentle. And this gentle soul turns out to be a, a killer. Mm. I mean, not really well, a killer. Well, not really. A, a kind of a, a, a dedicated. Well, he's fighting for his, um, the spirit of man, which has been denied him all his life. Um, it goes with, I think, anyone in the audience can identify with. We all have a potential, I think. And... Um, when that potential isn't realized, whether you're an actor, comedian, dancer, and no one gives you a chance, then you feel, well, I've been a totally wasted life, and usually you become deviant. He goes into somewhat semi-crime. Other people uh, end up on a psychiatrist's couch, mm -hmm. hostile, divorcing, and whatnot, when our potential isn't realized. And uh, That's interesting because you felt very strongly. I mean, that's your story more than it is Rocky's. Right. You felt that your potential wasn't being realized. He wrote this property. A, what, they weren't coming to you, breaking your door down with every script in town, I, I understand, and you decided, well, I'm going to write one that's me. Right, right. And then when they wouldn't let you star, they offered you a lot of money for other stars, didn't they? Oh, they offered, um, well, I got a, an excess of uh, like $250,000, and I had about $103 in the bank, but... And your but, wife was pregnant. And my wife is pregnant, and my dog was eating furniture, and uh, it was, it, <laughs> the, really, it was, it was desperate times. So I asked my wife if, uh, I said, if you don't mind taking a long shot, like, just ended up in the backyard grazing or something, because I mean, we don't have any money left, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and uh, see if we can tangle with the power structure a little yeah. bit. And you did. Well, yeah, you have nothing to lose when you have nothing to lose. Now, I tell you, we, I want to talk to you uh, a lot about it, but first I want them to see a clip. All right. uh, do you know which uh, segment of the movie we have? Yeah. Um, I've always been uh, really fasc uh, fascinated by going into like a pet shop or any type of shop, and I see a woman there who no one has ever taken any uh, concern of. And this girl, her name is Adrian. Rocky is kind of a loser. She is kind of a loser. And it's together, two losers are brought together. Now, he has been desperately trying to get a date with her, and he's finally gotten a date with her. And uh, he gets her up to his apartment, which is like, I'd say, a living accident. Uh, it is the worst. It is. It is, it is disgusting. Bad. Terrible, terrible place. And he raises turtles, and that's all he has in his life. Turtles and garbage. Total. So he brings it to this place. And a punching place, bag. And a, punching bag. <laughs> and a punch, And a few Hershey bars, and that's about it. And he brings her in. And this is uh, her, her nervousness in trying to leave, and him desperately wanting her to stay and... The rest, I hope, okay. is history. This is Talia Shire. This is Talia Shire, girl. right. She was uh, in The Godfather. In The she, Godfather, right. She's even better in this. Please take a look at this clip you from Rocky. You the room, do you? It's fine. Well, it's only temporary, you know. It's not that. What's the problem? You don't like me? You don't like the turtles? What's the problem? I don't think I belong here. It's okay. I don't belong here. Well, you know, it's okay, because you're my guest. You know? I don't know you well enough. I've never been in a man's apartment alone. Well, I... They're all the same, you know. I'm not sure I know you well enough. I don't feel comfortable. Your age, you know, I ain't so comfortable either. I should go. Don't go, please. Don't, don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Do me a favor. What? Take off these glasses. You have nice eyes. No. Do me another favor. I knew you was pretty. Don't 
tease me. It's easy. You said you had Hershey bars up there, too, right? Oh, well, yes. Which just goes to prove Hershey bars aren't doing as much in 76 as they did in World War II. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, what, what happens before that and after that, the, the, this very shy person and this, and this man who obviously has never had any kind of human right. relationship is really so touching. I was with him the night that uh, he beat uh, Jersey Joe Walker. Let me title. tell him who you, Can I tell him who you're talking about? Talk about Rocky Marciano, who uh, I realize we both idolize. Yes. But can I tell you a, a beautiful incident about the man? I was oh. with Rocky Marciano in Reno, Nevada. And Rocky, I think, pound for pound, was one of the strongest punchers that ever lived. And as we walked in to this nightclub in Reno, some guy about six foot seven, weighing 380 pounds, walked over and he said to Rocky, I could wipe up the floor with you in a minute. And Rocky turned to me and said, didn't I tell you when we walked in, there was one guy here that could take me? <laughs> and that guy walked away so proud. <laughs> no fight, nothing took place. Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. I used to do road work and all with Rocky. I loved him. You did? Sure, up at Grossinger's. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nobody worked harder. Nobody. Rocky used to take 20-pound weights and punch them underwater in the pool. I saw him duck walk 30 flights of stairs mm. as part of his training program. Duck walk, you mean down with, um, be, on bent knees? What, what? No, I meant... <laughs> well, I don't of course know. I meant... It's tough to do this show. It's tough to do this show. I, well, I, I have never trained for a fight, but I'm going to work on it. He, in tra he ate 24 eggs, 24 eggs a day. And he ran 19 miles, as much as 19 miles to train right. for that movie, every day. Not 19 miles altogether, 19 miles a day. He 24 eggs around 19 miles? Yes. Isn't that a long way to run just to get rid of 24 <laughs> eggs? <laughs> no, but I mean, that, that would certainly handle the cholesterol. He's running in great 19, shape. Yeah. Well, you, you worked. I mean, he really put himself well, in that's, bruising. Well, that's the thing. We, I, if you're going to play a fighter, it's not, I mean, you really have to live it. Or I think the audience now is so discerning and so... Um, attuned to what's happening, you can't cheat them on film anymore. No. You can't just, uh, like the older fight films and the actors only had like a week to prepare, they couldn't train. So we just learned and for about A lot of guys who, who played fighters could not, did not know how to use their hands. Mm -hmm. John Garfield in Body and Soul, did not, uh, uh, William Holden in Golden Boy did not, but the one guy who knew, he played a picture called Winner Take All, mm -hmm. James Cagney. He knew yeah, how to sure. throw punches and hold his hands. He just naturally knew how to move, right. period. Yeah. But the interesting thing is that he did all of these things on screen that the fighters have to do. And that fight at the end, which you choreographed, mm -hmm. it says on, on the credits right. there, uh, was, was uh, incredibly real. And I don't think you had a double in that very much, did you? <laughs> no, we couldn't afford a double. Uh, we couldn't even afford uh, lunch. So <laughs> It was a very low well, did budget. Did you get money for this? At all? I, I'm, now I'm confused. I thought that you turned down 250000 right. You have to understand that You they turned were... it all down and invested your own money? No. no, no, just to work for minimum. Like we have a minimum actor wage, right. minimum, uh, minimum screenwriting. No, Joey doesn't understand the basic thing. He wrote this script. Yes. And every studio said yes, or two or three studios said yes, I would like to buy it, but there, I have a star in mind yeah. that I want. He said, no, I wrote this for me. Right. And if you'll take me... I, I will work for scale. So he trained him, himself and he held out until right. Chardoff and Winkler mm -hmm. said, yes, we're going to go on that basis and they wouldn't consider anybody else right. and let him star in his own film, oh. which he had written for himself instead of taking some of the big name stars who would have trained. And they're, still taking, they're still taking quite a chance. I mean, in their minds, right? Well, sure. But their budget <laughs> was very low because yeah. they, and, and you, you went even under the budget that had been... So oh, yeah, we came in about $10 under. $10 under. <laughs> Went out and bought a house. <laughs> well, well, Didn't use any rosin, right? Yeah. <laughs> Save 10 bucks. Oh, sure. What was the reaction when the studio, when you first told the studio that they couldn't have this, that wonderful script for all that money uh, unless they used you in it? 
Well, I, I had pulled up to the studio in a 63 Olds that had, uh, it was painted rust. You know, was painted, nature had painted it. <laughs> right away, it. you're in trouble. Right away, they thought I was there to do the windows and do the trash. <laughs> and uh, when I asked for the money, they thought it was a joke. They thought it was a one-liner. Like, I was just in there auditioning to do Woody Allen movies. And the more I stuck to it, the, I think the more worried they became. Then they said, well, what the hell, let's, uh, let's show a little pioneer spirit and... I don't, it went up to Arthur Krim at the top of UA, then all the way back down again. They said, okay, let him go. Uh, we'll give you one million if you go over. That's too bad. And the producers put up the mortgage, their homes, their cars, their, uh, the locks, the bagels, everything was out. You know, they just put it all on the line. And luckily, uh, John Avelson brought in what I think is uh, going to go down as truly an extraordinary piece of work since it took 28 days. And I think it takes longer to hatch an, an egg or something. Sure. You know? Twenty, twenty, hatch an egg, yes. Yeah, really. And you ate twenty-four. I can't get over yeah. that. I watched that. Well, I walk strange from now on. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> I find myself sitting on a lot of beach balls, you know. Like... <laughs> but they didn't hatch, right? <laughs> right. No. Wait, wait, you talk about John Avelson just now, and he's yeah. a fine director. But now, with the writer and the star there on the screen, didn't that put an unusual amount of pressure on him? Oh yeah, it really did. Uh, the th the odd thing is, there was one picture taken, I wish I had it now. Uh, it's the 15th round, bloody and gored, and the nose is hanging in my ear. And, it's, and then he said, listen, could you rewrite the love scene for next Thursday? So they stick a, a giant big pen in my glove, and it's, it's claw shot. And this is what, the whole thing was maneuvered like that. So it was, I think that's what uh, brought the movie to, uh, to uh, such a, well, to actual fruition. It just yeah. came to, to a head because everyone had nothing to lose. All the actors in it, there are no names really except for Burgess Meredith. Uh, John Avelson was like, he was borderline. No one had really seen what he could do and now I think he'll uh, surface as a major force. It's one of the finest things Burgess Meredith has done in years and all oh, yeah. oh, He's oh, just yeah. wonderful in it. Oh, yeah. He plays a, a, a 76 year old trainer. Uh, this is his last chance and he's really treated the... Everyone's last well, Whitey chance. Whitey right, who worked in Rocky's Corner, yeah. Uh, is now almost that age, and he still is down at the Olympic uh, boxing arena. Um, now, there are two things that but just brought up, two things that, he, that we didn't mention before, that uh, Rocky in the movie, his idol, uh, Rocky Marciano, has a, has a picture right. over the mirror, and he stands there, and uh, the stance mm -hmm. is exquisite. But um, the gym scenes that you had were so authentic. Did, were you a boxer before? Had you worked out? Uh, no, I just always had an overly aggressive mouth. Oh, yes. <laughs> and that, well, that didn't take you into gyms or out of No, but that. it sure kept me in, uh, in uh, supply of fisticuffs and yeah. backyard pugilism and all that. Um, but this drab, noisy oh, place. Oh, it's the noisiest place. If you've never been in a gym, it's, it's a whole other world, right, Joe? You go yeah. into a trance. It's the, the bags and the pounding, and that's just what I always felt was missing yeah. from uh, other fight films, so we incorporated that. And there was one scene. Rocky Marciano's manager, uh, at times, when Rocky would say, listen, I'm a little tired, but haul off and hit him right in the jaw. Bang. You treat him like, really, like, a, like a young caveman. And I said, let's do that in the movie. That'll look great. So I... He's tying a string between my feet, so I, I carry my body just so. And I say, okay, Burgess, during this point, you just haul off and smack me right here. Don't miss on the chin, okay, because you're really fragile. Hauls off, hits the earlobe, right? All this, I don't know, potatoes come out, whatever oh. comes out of your oh, ear. Oh, yeah. Then he hauls off, hits me in the nose. Third take, third take, he's knocking me out. I'm playing a fighter, and Burgess, <laughs> Burgess, Ooh, Burgess. Yeah, he's not very tall. I'm a, I'm a five foot ten blood club by now. I said, all right, times. I tell you what, we'll do the red shoes. I mean, forget it. Yeah. I, I uh, so uh, we decided not to go with uh, Burgess's punch to the ear for uh, the sake of my health. Yeah. Really. Did you know Rocky had a, a back problem, all of his life? Did you know that? No. No. Yeah. Al Wild, you know, who handled right. Rocky. Yeah, Rocky had, and not many people knew about it. And that's really the reason, his main reason for retiring. Was because on of the account of his back. And he's the first man in the history of boxing in the heavyweight division who ever won the title without having been previously defeated. Mm -hmm. Tony was defeated by Greb. Dempsey was defeated. That's right. Uh, Joe Lewis was defeated by Schmeling in an untitled fight. He was the first one. Record, I think, was 49 fights, 45 knockouts. Four draws, right. uh, four decisions. Right.
Tell me, did you ever think about doing the Rocky Marciano story? Well, uh, I couldn't take the liberties with it. Uh, this man's story is much more pathetic yeah. than Rocky. Rocky was, um, I think, much more well-adjusted. A fighter from the beginning, really. Right. He and was... this man uh, really was just a bum. Well, Rocky was more of a, he was a baseball player, then became he, a fighter. He was a catcher, a great athlete, right. by the way. Right. Yeah. Yes. You, I heard an interesting story about your mother, and I, um, I don't know if many people know this. His mother... His mother beat Joe Lewis no. in a three-rounder. No. <laughs> no. I was there, April the 14th, 1951. No, that was Split Sylvia decision. Bruce. That was Sylvia Bruce. Sylvia Bruce. Now, no, the thing is, it, his mother said... Well, she's an astrologist. Isn't you an amateur uh, astrologist? No, well, I... What did she say? She gets paid, so I guess she could say she's oh, a professional. Oh, she's a professional. Yeah. And, and she uh, read your stars or something? What did she say? Yeah, it was about eight years ago uh, when I was just starting out in acting. And uh, I said, how, how am I going to do, Ma? And she says, no one will talk to you for six years. <laughs> she said that? So, so I said, what do I do? Just disconnect the phone, nail the door shut, and get a job as a, as a zookeeper. I, don't, you know, I didn't know what to, what to do. But she says, you will be a writer. Now, up in this time, I had made it, I was a real success at not being able to uh, spell my name hardly. I was a terrible, terrible writer, no, Ter I... all terrible. When they would say diagram a sentence, I had no idea, I thought it was filthy when diagrams. <laughs> what do they mean, you know? I'm serious, I'm serious. So, uh, what happened? I went to see Easy Rider, and I was really down and out. And uh, I said, well, here's a movie that made $35 million, and since I'm doing nothing for the next six years, why? Why don't I just go out <laughs> and invest in a pad and pencil? If nothing else, maybe I can pick, you know, doodle. Yeah. Doodle for six years. How nice of you to believe what your mother said. I mean, if she said you're not going to make it for six years, and you Well, she that... really wanted him was to enter a monastery where nobody talks to you for six years. Right. But he misunderstood.